All right, here we go, guys, and we are back at the Florida Boat Shows 2024 edition. We're looking at small center consoles today. Uh, if we are indoors, we are in Miami. If we are outdoors, we are in Stewart, Florida. I believe most of the boats are going to be in Miami this year, the indoor show. I, I believe the Grady White is the only one that is outdoors. These are boats 22 feet and under, smallest and cheapest, being a 13-foot Whaler Super Sport, just under 26000 and most expensive, not uh, unexpectedly, is the Grady White 21-footer coming in at uh, a smidge under $126,000, so 100K more than that 13-footer, and nestled in between our 21 and 22-foot models. And I say 22, we'll talk about it at the end. None of these are really 22s. They're all, you know, 21 and change, these boats, save that small uh, whaler super sport. Uh, they're coming in. Between those two boats, uh, the Stingray is at 65000 The Roballo is at about 90000 And surprisingly, a, a really well-appointed, with one fatal flaw in my opinion, Blackfin, uh, coming in at 109 and change. Uh, I'll come back at the end and offer you my thoughts. Hope you enjoy this video. As always, if you like these videos, please hit that like button. And if you're not already a subscriber and you enjoy content like this, please consider subscribing. All right, a Whaler 130 Super Sport, one of the cheapest wheel boats here at the show, 25,983. Let's just say 26,000. Uh, six and a half gallon gas tank here, mechanical throttle there. There's your steering area. Here's your bench where you would sit down and drive. Two cup holders. What is this, a 40 or a 60? Got a Merc here. It's a 40. Got an integrated boarding ladder here if you do want to go for a swim. Bimini top on this, you get a little shade. I mean, I, I was just on the Edgewater 370, which was about 800,000. If you own that boat, this, this is what you buy your, uh, your, your 13, 14, 15 year old kid to put around in the intercoastal in, or, or the bay or whatever protected sheltered body of water, get them into boating. Your battery is exposed, it's under the helm there, it's under the bench seat there. Um, you do have a big area here where you could put, I'm not sure how it opens, but you could put uh, life jackets and tackle or whatever you like or anchor I guess too you want to have one of those on board uh, it does have a lot of uh, cup holders you got the two there you got three here four there you're gonna have more cup holders and you can have people on the boat which is interesting we do that with rod holders but I'm not sure I would have maybe added a rod holder somewhere um, there you go a 13 foot Super Sport, Boston Weller. Not even allowed on it. Do not climb. Do not climb. That's the sign there. Let's get a close up of that. All right, an affordable 21 footer Stingray. As equipped, let's see, what do we got? We got 66 grand, just under. Nice looking little boat. Let's see if we can step on board. How you doing? Good. All right, Yamaha F-150. Likely the perfect power for a boat like this. Here you go, an integrated boarding ladder, recessed. And yeah, very basic layout here. You have a jump seat here, and that's probably a trick to it. No, there isn't. When it's down, it can be used as a casting platform. You'll see that there's storage on this side. There's one, two, three, four rod holders, two cup holders, another jump seat there, more rod storage under there. Little glove box up there, flip up bolster seats. Very typical. Not a problem. Enjoy your day. Layout here. Facing forward. It's a nice touch here. Very unique. Again, not, not exactly cookie cutter. You got tackle storage here. 
you have this area here that could be a cutting board. I'm presuming it might be a sink option, a couple cup holders, forward seating here, room for a table there. Do we have a cooler here? Don't know. Yeah, we do. It's actually a live well. Live well there. Probably more tackle storage here. No, garbage here. Little sink area here. Or a bait prep area. There's no sink. Forward seating here. Cup holders, rod holders along the side. For the price, you want to get out on the water? Not a bad little deal. Let's see what the head compartment looks like. Yeah, hey, a little roomier than I thought it'd be. There's a, there's a table there. I think that's a porta potty under it. Got a sea deck type floor material under that. And they have a little bit of a, that's a, a painted gel coat in here, which is interesting. But looks well made. You got rod holders, top of the T-top as well. A couple of kingfish rod holders as well. 66 grand. This, this would be in 2024 in the affordable column. Four more here too. Do give you a lot of rod holders. Stingray 21. All right, here's a 21 foot Grady, the 215 center console, single 200 integrated boarding ladder there, recessed. Um, nice little entry area here too, so you can get in either side. I'm not sure, no, there is no boarding ladder on that side. There's the splash well. Simple four rod layout here, four more on top. Flip, nope, not flip up bolster seats. I'm so used to saying that. Uh, just regular uh, seats here. It's a, I don't even know what they call them. Uh, no electronics on this one. There is a Yamaha Diagnostics, though. Uh, 125, 662, as you see, these uh, beefy grab rails as you're piloting the vessel. You got this uh, wraparound windshield, too. Electronics box right above that. And yeah, just your basic area up here. You can access that storage though, which I like without having to remove the cushions. Those backrests do slide out of the way. And how does this open? Okay, this one, you, you can't uh, access it like that. You do have to kind of move the cushions, but there's a little cooler up here. Uh, and your anchor locker right there. And we don't want to get guillotined by this uh, rope here that's holding the boats in place. Um, yeah. And there's the battery switch. Very simple, functional boat. Uh, 125 with a single F300. Let's see, oh, this one I think was a 200, but I, did I misstate that? Let's take a look. I didn't. It's advertised though for that price with the 300. This is a 200. And you know, 300 just didn't seem right, and I did in fact check the Grady White website. Max horsepower rating on this model, again, the 216, is 250 horsepower. So my presumption is that 125 plus price is actually with the 200, and the 300 was a typo. All right, a Roballo 222 Explorer, uh, $90,098. So a touch over 90 on a 22-footer. Uh, Seems like a good deal. Let's see what we got. Probably, I'm guessing, a 150 or a 200. It's a 200. I wonder what Explorer denotes. Um, could just be their, their brand name on the smaller boats. I'm not sure I've heard them referred to as Explorers before. But let's step on board this 22-footer from Rivalo. See what we got. I like that right off the bat. Uh, there's the boarding ladder, but you see it is covered. There's a latch. It's not going to, you know, pop open and shut down as you're driving. And it just gives you a, a, a safe spot as you're boarding the boat. Boom. You don't have to worry about twisting your ankle um, in one of the, the ladder legs. Like we said, F200 four-cylinder. This is a big seat. Unfortunately, it's not flip-up. So, yeah, uh, it does eat into the fishing room a little. One two, three, four rod holders here behind the forward seat. One, two, three, four on top, some LED lights as well. There's a Coleman cooler. I'm sure if you 
by the boat. You can swap that out for an Arctic or a, a Yeti if you like. Flip up bolster seats though, that's nice. Uh, there they are. No electronics at this price. There's the Yamaha Diagnostic. Looks like this might be a mechanical throttle, not a digital throttle. Don't quote me on that. Two cup holders on this side. Some uh, footrest there, a, a footrest area, two level footrest area as you're piloting the vessel. Let's see what else we have. This too, like the other Robalos we've seen, has the forward entry into the head compartment. Um, really small space, but it's a 22 footer. I'm sure you could pop a porta potty in there if you like. There is, however, a forward fish box. There are wraparound seats here. I'm sure those cushions we saw in the head compartment go up here. When they do go in, you do have to remove them if you want to get into the storage. Doesn't look like there's any storage via the, the middle section, anchor locker up there. It doesn't have the enclosed windshield like some of the bigger Robalos, but it does offer a, a smaller windshield. And there is a spot here for your fire extinguisher or, or you know, if you want to store things. Again, hard to argue with that price. Uh, sparsely equipped this one, but well under, well under uh, 100,000. All right. This is a uh, Blackfin 222, 22-foot Blackfin Mercury 250. I believe this is the, does it say? No, this gets a little confusing at the 250 size. Uh, Merc makes their V8. Let's take a look at what we got. 109,603. Um, they start at 99.9, presuming that uh, 109 is as equipped, but you'll see that you get a lot on these black fins. They're just beautiful, beautiful boats, and they're they're heavy. They're overbuilt. You got a uh, a ladder. A, a, pardon me, a little door here for your integrated boarding ladder. That's nice. It's it's closed and out of the way. You can step on it and not stub your feet. Got three rod holders here across the back. This is not a flip-up bolster seat, but I do see the handle is here. Nice. Oh, look at this bilge access, and it's gel coat finished in here. It's got lights in here. I'm not a fan of your batteries being in here, your switches here, but uh, hey, you got a uh, nice big bilge pump there. Got your water pump there. As long as you keep that, make sure that bilge pump is working. You wouldn't want those batteries to get filled with water. I presume this is a live well here. Yep, nice deep live well. Got a seat here that actually comes out, so that's removable. Slide out cooler there. Handle here if you're standing up riding behind. One, two, three, four rod holders here. Rod holders also back here, two of them on each side. Do you have a little club box here? A couple cup holders there. Uh, single engine boat, so. Only one binnacle here. Flip up bolster seats here. Yeah. Nice vantage point to drive. Another glove box up here. This is a very dark, almost like a black matte finish up here. There's your Garmin screen. Room for a second. Again, this price is 109 at the boat show. You're getting a $26,000 discount here. These uh, backrests flip out of the way. Forward entry to the head area. There you go. There's all your electronics. Not covered, but that's okay. It's all neat, nicely done. Little porta potty in here, too. There's a step down area. It actually looks pretty roomy for a 22. Forward uh, big fish bots here, too. More cup holders up here in case you're riding up here. Access to your anchor locker. Really wide walkways too, no issue walking down this area. Combing pads also, that's nice. So if you are fighting a fish, you can lean into them. Really nice. This Blackman is one of my favorite brands. I was just talking to the gentleman at the dealer. I, I would put this up there with Everglades and Grady White in terms of like that upper tier of mid-tier boats. Um, this 22 will be cheaper than a Grady and probably cheaper than an Everglades or an Edgewater of the same size and it's probably what I would pick and I'm a, you know, I owned an Everglades, I'm a fan despite what people think because of 
what I think about their pricing of Grady's, uh, which you're getting a lot about here for 109. I know I'm gonna get ripped apart in the comments for that, but it's true. All right, let's see what we got next. And what we got next are my final thoughts, which would I pick and why? And this is a tough one. Um, you know, value wise, it's hard to beat that Stingray, 65 grand. And if you look at it dimensionally, 21 degrees of dead rise, 21 plus feet, none of these boats were really, and we're not going to count that whaler super sport, right? The 13 footer, but none of the 22s in this list were really 22 feet. They were all in that 21 and a half foot range, as were the 21s. It's really hard to beat that price. I mean, 65K in 2024. Um, if I were going for bling, it would definitely be that black fin. I think reasonably priced at 109. The one thing I really did not like about that boat, come on, guys, move those batteries out of the bilge. It's so easy for one of those pumps to 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 break or fail. And, you know, you, you get water in the bilge. It's not that uncommon. And it'll be disaster if your batteries are there. They're going to short out. You're going to lose power. You're not going to sink. But, you, you know, it's just not the place for batteries, especially in 2024. It's it's like manufacturers who still use a lot of wood in their boat building when there are all these composites that are so much better. Let me know what you think in the comments. Hope you enjoyed this video. As always, if you like these videos, hit that like button. And if you're not already a subscriber and you like content like this, please consider subscribing.